Just about everything happened during the first half of this game, so buckle in and enjoy. Before the game even kicked off, Frio instantly straight after old teammate Lob. Lob probably just expecting a few argy bargy hits. Pierce comes in for a couple of hip and shoulders, and then McRae tries to break it up and just holds on to Pierce for dear life. Norton from nowhere comes in and throws Ryan to the deck for no reason at all. Lob ends up falling to the ground and the Frio players are loving it. Don't want to be a spoil sport, but maybe if they paid half of their attention as they did to Lob on the game, they might have actually won the f***ing thing. To start us off in terms of the actual game, Frio switched the ball in quite the uncanny way which ended up working out although it was very scrappy. McLean gets taken a little high which isn't paid, agree with this, play on, then Daniel is in amongst the play and shrugs off a couple of tackles to then be taken high. He backed into the player with his head dropping his knee to draw the free kick and Johnson, the tackler, had no hope in avoiding the head high contact. After the free kick, Daniel puts it through for a behind and the dogs crowd are all quite depressed. This gentleman wiping his forehead and whatever hairs he has left. This Sheila not impressed at all with what is happening. And then there's this cheery girl clapping along after the behind to go 0 and 6 on the scoreboard. She must have some future seeing power or some shit because she doesn't doubt their mob for a second. So Amira marks the ball and huddles back a little as footballers do after a mark to get distance from the person on the mark. It's what they're taught from a junior level and it's muscle memory at this point in their career. This new, well modern standard rule has been implemented to allow free flowing gameplay which sometimes does the job or sometimes creates confusion as it has here. Jones is still halfway on the ground getting up and the umpire is called stand where Amira has backpedaled to which makes no sense at all since he took the mark about 2 meters in front of him. Jones actually goes to the correct spot on the mark but the umpire had already called him to stand which would have been behind Amira where he was going to already kick the ball. My footy over the back and Amira now and game one for Nike over the back and Amira now and so to ask Jones to stand behind him is obnoxious because one of two things would happen. One, O'Meara would be able to kick the ball with Jones standing behind him, which is a bit f***ing weird. Or two, Jones would stand up behind him and the umpire would call O'Meara back if he had to kick the ball, as this is technically not behind the mark, according to most umpires. In the end, this is a tough one to call. I would have allowed Jones to stand up to guard the mark properly. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Two fumbles by the Dockers lead to a goal for the Dogs. First, O'Meara stopped watching the ball, which put the pass under pressure, to then the Dogs' pressure became immense that led to another fumble through the legs of Walker and the dogs kept edging their way forward by applying tackles and hand passes and getting the ball along until the eventual holding the ball on Pierce who honestly don't get me started about that man in this game. English here is fuming with the kick forward which should have been placed with the mismatch on. Now what the f is this handball. A couple of minutes left and you get rid of it as soon as you get it to Williams who had he just had no one on at all. It ends up in a Frio goal when all you needed to do was wait for your team to get set up. Lob has a blunder and the crowd get involved again. Yes, good on ya Lobby. So this was a little bit both players are holding on to each other and Norton ends up with a free kick. I'll break it down a little here. So Pierce is holding the jersey, which is the main telltale the umpire used to call the free kick, but clearly forgot that Norton has arms too. And he's literally holding on to Pierce's arm. There are other arms, Norton holding the jersey under the armpit of Pierce and maybe Pierce's arm around the back of Norton. But again, I shouldn't have to explain where their f***ing arms are and what holding is because both the players were holding. So play on AFL. Thank you for all of the support in the videos recently. Recently. Plenty of more content on the way and we are nearly at 250 subscribers, all thanks to you lovely people. Now to make it even, the umpires give a free kick in front of Frio's goals, not only a minute later, for an over the shoulder high free kick, was also a little bit iffy. Frederick ends up with the ball in the second quarter, 35 out from goal and decides to kick it like this. Why not just kick a drop pun and kick a goal? Maybe he thought he was under more pressure, but this was a massive chance to start off big in the second term. Trelaw should have been called for play on here, took a step off the line of the mark. We have better vision of this here. Two umpires watching on, missing a clear call because nine times out of ten they call these play on. Williams sells some Allen's lollies, not sponsored, so f it, black and gold lollies. Never mind, just sell some chubba chups. F just unbranded lollies and kicks an almighty goal from the boundary. One of the best games he has played in his career. To not call this high, but to then call it holding the ball is, is quite sad. Norton starts the tackle on the chest of Hughes, but as he brings him to the ground, catches him high. And if you're ever in doubt, just say my ball and, and throw the f***ing thing in the air. After the goal, the Frio fans are not happy. Shit, shit. 
starts up by the strangest looking bloke in the crown and maybe on planet earth then a couple of double birds by some women one after the other like a whack-a-mole game this should have been holding the ball incorrect disposal which was missed first the fend after picking up the ball then drops to the knees without disposing the ball correctly this is another holding the ball call that was missed and it reminded me of the one in the 2019 Anzac game where the players just sort of stop I believe Scott had time to dispose of it he does fumble it when he first receives it but that's not the tackler's fault and it should have been paid prior opportunity and incorrect disposal pick one of them I don't really care the first free kick shouldn't have been paid for either holding the man or holding the ball here play on umpire says you play on AFL and gives Trelaw the free kick which disgusts the Freo fans he then throws the ball to Libba like literally throws the ball out which is illegal by the way umpires then Frederick comes out of f***ing nowhere and says thank you very much two umpires there one says kick and the other pins it for holding the ball <laughs> uh, so much just happened then Whoever the umpire is that said this is a kick has to be trolling. So first off, Trelaw didn't really take possession, but was paid the free kick, which we've seen recently with the Mackay descent video. So that's not really adding up and there's no f***ing consistency there. Then Trelaw throws the ball to Libba. Literally, he f***ing threw the ball. And then Libba got ran down, which he had the exact same time that Scott did to dispose of the ball. And the umpire paid this one holding the ball. What the actual f***? is up with the consistency of the umps here. We have four of them on the ground, yet all four of them are clueless as f***. I don't mind if the calls are a little off and mistakes get made, but people want consistency. It's similar to how they pay insufficient intent. Just keep everything else consistent during the game. Corey Wagner. Beautiful. <laughs> Daniel outbodies Darcy, which is so f***ing weird, but I can sort of understand why. Daniel knows that Darcy is coming in, so he can sort of set his body up, whereas Darcy had only eyes for the ball, and similar to running into anything, if you don't know it's there, you're gonna fall down. The free kick was probably there for a block. I missold it a little, but we're gonna talk about the umpire here. Yes, the same umpire that called dissent in the Carlton versus GWS game. Keith, after giving away the free kick, shows extreme dissent, as defined by the AFL, since they cannot show any emotion screams in anger, arms out in the air, looks at the umpire angrily, and no 50. No extra free kick, no instant goal. Oh my god, it's almost like the umpire was extremely hormonal the other week. Well, I sure hope they gave him a piece of Cadbury chocolate after the game. I mean, unbranded chocolate. This would be nightmarish as a coach. Eugle Hagen has an opportunity to score a goal, and all of your players are focused on fighting lob. The ball is miskicked, and no one is in position, and you let Trelaw kick a fantastic goal, but to start a fight with your ex-teammate, which you already did at the start of the game and the crowd is assisting in this battle you still need to think about the f***ing war which if you had of you might have actually won the game into the last quarter and honestly this is my reaction to it summed up perfectly f*** all happened except Bont's mark which was unreal and then this sign in the crowd even with home ground advantage, Freo lost the game on their own terms by sticking more time into their ex-teammate instead of the actual f***ing sport which allowed the dogs to run freely into their third win of the season play on AFL things do better with fun and laughter